Canada's fighting men go over the top. In Sicily and in Italy, they prove themselves in battle, and in Canada's fifth victory line, they prove themselves in buying. Twelve days after the campaign opened, the Canadian Army overseas passed its $2,500,000 objective, and the barometer was still rising. The fifth victory line was a fresh challenge to the nation to pledge itself anew to the waging of the war, and that challenge was well answered. For the Canadian Army overseas, it was their war, and they knew full well the great necessity for the tools with which to fight it. In eight days, Canadians in Italy had subscribed $612,000, and the demand was so great that application forms were exhausted. Their objective of $1 million was soon passed, bringing the overseas subscription to $4,750,000. Canada's fighting men and women pressing forward to the day of victory. Major General the Honorable P.J. Montague and other senior officers were at the airport to greet Colonel the Honorable J.L. Walson, Canadian Minister of National Defense, on another of his flying trips to Great Britain. Mr. Frederick Hudd represented the Honorable Vincent Massey, and others included Lieutenant General Stewart and Major General Letson, also a recent arrival in England. Major General Letson, accompanied by Major General Roberts, paid a visit recently to various reinforcement units. The pre op II selection center was among the places visited, and the officer commanding, Colonel McNeil, showed them the training course. After visits to infantry reinforcement units, they went to number one Canadian base ordnance workshop, where the Major General and his party examined the many types of drills and machines used in the workshop. The Royal Canadian Engineers Reinforcement Unit was next on the list of units to visit, and all in all, it was a busy day. Cadet J.A. Hickson, DCM, is the only Canadian soldier to be twice decorated in this war. Winner of the DCM at the up, he had now been awarded the Military Medal for bravery while serving with the 8th Army. Congratulations, Hickson. You'll make a fine officer. We are the veterans of this war. We are the men who came from Canada with the 1st Division. We landed full of high hopes, ready for the crack of the enemy. But we never landed in France. Though we boarded the troop ships, they only sailed out of the harbor. We are the young veterans. We fought in the hot and blood-stained beaches of Dieppe. On a sunny day in August, we attacked against the withering fire of the enemy. We made the reconnaissance in force. We pioneered the landings in Sicily. But we are not the wounded who return from Dieppe. They did not lie in the sun and the beaches waiting for the German stretcher bearers. They are the more fortunate ones who returned on that day. But we have had our day at last. After 15 months in prison, we are on our way home. We landed at least on another sunny day in October. Ronald Adam greeted us and read us a message from our king. The queen and I bid you a very warm welcome. Through all your trials and sufferings, you have been constantly in our thoughts, and we rejoice to think that you are now safe home. Even though the actual homes of some of you are in the distant parts of the empire, you may be very sure that while you are in these islands, you will never lack friends. <laughs> You may wonder who I am, after you've heard the Adjutant General. I am the Lord Provost of the City of Edinburgh, and as such, the Lord High Admiral of the Fourth, and it is at Leith, which is part of the City of Edinburgh, you're going to land. Those of you who are Scotsmen will appreciate very much how warm the welcome we want to give you. But those of you who are not Scotsmen, those of you who are less fortunate, <laughs> Those 
Those of you who are not Scotsmen, we'll try and do the best we can for you. Uh, turn your minds back to the fact that this war is not over. Much has yet to be endured. Think of your comrades whom you've left behind. They're still unfree. Think of Europe. It is still unfree. You and I and the people of this country are going to join together to free your comrades and free the world. That's our welcome this morning. When we came ashore, some of us were able to walk. We may have seemed to be sound in wind and limb, but we are not, for all of us are wounded or disabled. But that didn't stop us yelling, singing, and waving to the girls. We sang Roll Out the Barrel, because we didn't know a newer song. We had just come back from Germany where we had seen the arrogant Hun gradually change. Now they were becoming uncertain of the victory they had promised. We had broken their morale by our faith. You're uh, Canadian? Yes. And an old soldier as well? Yes. I should tell you about a letter by you, but no. <laughs> without getting captured again. How long have you been a prisoner? Uh, Fourteen months. Fourteen months? Yes. Where were you captured? Yeah, but some of us landed at Liverpool. We were the more seriously wounded. Some were stretcher cases, some blind, but arriving in England gave us new hope. Mr. Massey, the High Commissioner, came down to meet us. He greeted us and wished us luck from Canada. But whether we came ashore walking or if we were carried on stretchers, one thought was uppermost in our minds. We were on our way home and the people of Britain had welcomed us again with the joy they showed when we first arrived here nearly four years ago. We are the young veterans of this war. We have given our limbs in the fight for freedom. We are not only soldiers, we are men of the Royal Canadian Air Force. We were the pilots, the bomb aimers, and the air gunners who were shot down over Germany. Yes, we have been in the fight. Some of us have seen the cities of Germany laid waste by the accurate bombs of the air forces of the United Nations, but now we are on our way to the hospitals to complete our cure. We are anxious now to get home. These are some of us. Jim Fleming and C. Hoskin from Windsor, Bob Hall from Toronto, Sergeant Michaud from Montreal, who fought at Dieppe, Armand Girard, who comes from Bell River, Ontario, Norman Scully from Windsor, captured at Dieppe, Norman Colley of the Essex Scottish, also captured at Dieppe, Frank Ouellette, Cauchy, Ontario. Norman and I are from Windsor, while Glenn is a Toronto boy. We all went to Dieppe together, and well, we managed to catch a packet. Then, then we were sent to Germany, Glenn and I going to Stalagate B, while Norm went to 9C. Since then, since we have passed the repatriation committee, we have been waiting anxiously to return home. Now that we have, we are actually here, well, we can hardly believe it. Time, time won't go fast enough now before we get back to Canada. Okay. We are the young veterans. We fought at the beginning of the end.